Assalamualaikum. We will be now looking at the meninges of the cranial cavity. The meninges are divided into three parts the dura, the arachnoid, and the pia mater. We will be looking at each part individually. The reason I am doing this right after the cerebrum is that it's a small topic, and since it is the dura mater, arachnoid, and pia mater is role in supporting the brain, nourishing the brain and basically anchoring all the vessels to supply the brain, I thought it would be prudent to do this first. So first thing we'll be looking at is the dura mater. Now what you see in front of you is actually one portion of the skull. Half of it is intact, the other half is exposed to show you the inside. Now the dura mater is actually composed of two parts, an endosteal part and a uh, periosteal part. The one which is close to the skull, as you can see the one lining up here, this is the endosteal part. It is actually the part which closely adheres to the bone and it is not continuous with the dura mater around the spinal cord. As we descend down through the foramen magnum right over here and here the meninges will cover the spinal cord but it is only the periosteal part of the spinal cord uh, of the dura mater which descends downward. The endosteal part will remain right along the bones. And these, this uh, endosteal part is actually, uh, it fuses with the suture lines. So basically it prevents any sort of leakage if at all, otherwise suture lines themselves are closely opposed. And the the endosteal part is actually quite thick and it only wraps around the openings of the cranial nerves. Now right below that this portion right here which is forming all these extensions within inside the brain this is the dura mater proper the second layer and it is actually this thing which is responsible for prevention of displacement of the brain so the extension themselves each have their own name this thing you're seeing right here which divides the cerebrum into two cerebral halves right and left hemisphere is the fox cerebri you can see the name appears as cerebral fox but uh, another way to pronounce it is actually fox cerebri and as we go on the back side the fox cerebri meets with a horizontal dura mater proper which is known as the tentorium cerebri this is actually dividing the cerebrum and the cerebellum which lies in the cerebral cavity down below. What I'll try to do is I'll try to expose more of this so that you can see how it looks like. I'll be removing the temporal bone here and here you can see just a bit how this tentorium cerebri is forming a roof over the cerebellar cavity. The fox cerebri is forming a longitudinal like roof on top. So these are two types of the dura mater proper. As we go up forward, you can see how this dura mater proper forms a covering around this region. This region is your diaphragmatic cellae. The diaphragmatic cellae, think of it as a covering over the silica tertica. The silica tertica is that region where you have your pituitary gland. And here you, it is the uh, dura mater making a roof on top of that. So if they ask you what other diaphragms are present in your body, here's another diaphragm which is non-muscular, it is fibrous and this one is a diaphragm axillary. Anyway, let us see it. Okay. Now aside from this, there is one other part of the dura mater proper which is not really visible here. It is very parallel to the fox cerebri and it goes downwards. It is known as the fox cerebelli. Just like the fox cerebri is dividing two hemispheres of cerebrum, the fox uh, cerebelli is dividing the two hemispheres of the cerebellum. And the fox cerebri is dividing the, the two hemispheres of the cerebrum, while the fox cerebri is dividing the two hemispheres of the cerebellum. Now, all this what you're seeing of the dura mater you can also appreciate these dural venal sinuses. These are basically the veins which are passing 
through the cerebrum and anchored into the uh, dura mater. The largest of these is the superior sagittal sinus, this one right here. It goes right over the top part of the dura. And an important point to mention is that uh, these sinuses are actually sandwiched between the uh, two parts of the dura mater, the endosteal and the periosteal part. There is another uh, model here that I'll show you just to clarify how it looks like. In fact, let's go to that right now just to see and clarify. Here you can see a coronal section. Basically, we're taking a horizontal cut of the cranial vault. And here we can see how this thing you're seeing right here is the superior sagittal sinus and how it is actually sandwiched between two layers of the dura mater. This layer right here, this is the bone and dura mater here and a dura mater here. The top one is the endosteal because it's closely close to the bone. The bottom one is the dura mater proper and you can see how the superior sagittal sinus is passing right in between it. These what you see right here, arachnoid granulations. We'll come to this later because it's basically an extension of the arachnoid matter into the superior sagittal sinus. Going back to the previous image. Now, superior sagittal sinus will go all the way black and meet right here at the confluence of sinuses. The confluence of sinuses actually has several other veins joining here. The transverse sinus from the side, this is the transverse sinus, the straight sinus right over here and obviously the other transverse sinus on the other side. So two transverse sinuses, one superior sagittal sinus, one straight sinus and there is just one more to add here, this one, the occipital sinus. All one, two, three, four, five of these join to form the confluence of sinuses and the landmark which denotes this is right over here. This area is where you have the confluence of sinuses, the external occipital protuberance. Having that said, so all the uh, blood is drained from this, they'll come to this confluence of sinus, then to the transverse and it's from the transverse they'll enter into the sigmoid sinuses. The sigmoid are S-shaped sinuses and these will then pass through the internal jugular vein which are located right over here you can see them very nicely from the internal jugular vein they will descend downwards and into into the subclavian veins this is how the blood from the brain is drained back into the heart up in front you may have noticed that there are other communications as well two veins which are meeting on the back one which meets the transverse and the other one which is actually meeting the sigmoid at the bottom. This is your superior petrosal and inferior petrosal veins. They're actually communicating with your cavernous sinus over here. The cavernous sinus is a large vein-like structure close to the silica tertica. So all of this blood which is drained from the face actually enters into the cavernous sinus and from here it is drained via the petrosal veins back into the uh, transverse and sigmoid and from there into the internal jugular vein. So there's an important clinical actually here that any sort of lesion in front of the face, like the nose region, there's a danger triangle here. Any infection that comes through that lesion can potentially pass into these veins, into the cavernous sinus, and potentially causing encephalitis. Although the rates at which this happens is quite low, it is still known to happen. So this was basically the dura mater and the uh, dural venous sinuses in a nutshell. We'll be moving on to the arachnoid matter next.